Hey everyone, welcome to part 97 of my Pokemon game series in Trinity. So in this video, we'll look at how to move the player character during the cutscene. And we'll also implement a cutscene like this, in which the player will follow the NPC character to a certain position. So to implement this cutscene, we also need to be able to execute two cutscene actions parallelly. So we'll also look at how to implement that in this video. By the way, I started a new series on Patreon that covers how to make a 3D Pokemon game like Pokemon Legends Arceus in Unity. So if you're interested in making a 3D Pokemon game or a 3D RPG game in general, then you can check out this course on Patreon. So by becoming a Patreon, you can support this channel and get access to the 3D Pokemon series and get some other cool rewards like the complete project files of the series, some exclusive tutorials, and access to the Discord community. So before we start, I want to say a huge thanks to all the Patreons who are currently supporting the channel. You guys make the series possible and I'm grateful to each and every one of you. So let's start the video. So right now, we can only move the NPCs using the move actor action. We can't move the player. The reason is because since we only have the player in the gameplay scene and since we don't have it in any other scenes, we won't be able to assign the player character to the move actor action. Right. So to solve that, what we can do is, above the character, here we can add another boolean called is player character. Okay. And if that is true, then we can move the player character. So let's go to the move actor action script. Okay. And we can add the boolean over here if you want. But I'll actually create a new class for this called Cutscene Actor. Okay. And this class will have a variable, a Boolean variable called is player. And then it will also have a variable to store the character. Okay. And then here, instead of defining the character object, we can define an object of the cutscene actor. All right, I'll just call this actor. So the reason why I put this in a separate class is because there will be more actions in which we will have to reference a character. So we can also reuse this class in those actions. Okay, so next from this class, we need to define a function that will return the character that we should use. So if is player is true, then we should use the player character. And otherwise, we should use the character that is assigned over here. Okay. So here we can create a function called get character. Okay. And from this function, if is player is true, then we have to return the player character and otherwise we can return the character that is assigned in this object. All right. So how can we return the player character? We don't have access to the player controller script from here. So what I'll do is I'll actually make the player controller a singleton so that we can easily access it. So here, let me create a public static instance for the player controller all right and let me assign the instance from the awake function okay so now from here we can get the player controller instance by calling player controller dot i and we have to return the player controller's character right so we can use the character property of the player controller to return that. All right. So if this player is true, then we'll return the player character. And otherwise, we'll return the character that is assigned in this field. Okay. So now in the play function, we have to use the character that is returned by this function. So let me create a variable to store that. All right, 
I'll call actor dot get character function to get the character and that will be the character we move from here okay and by the way before I forget let me just add the system dot serializable attribute over here so that the class will be serialized and it will appear in the inspector all right so now let's go to unity and let's try to move the player using the move actor action so in this cutscene I'll add another move actor action and in here for the actor I'll select the player character by turning on this checkbox okay and let's say we just want to move the player towards the right just for testing so I'll just set the X to 5 okay so now let's go to the gameplay scene and let's test if this is working okay let me go start the cutscene okay looks like we have a null reference error oh we forgot to reassign the NPC after we made the change so let me go ahead and do that so in the first more act action we have to reassign the NPC character so the first action will move the NPC and the last action will move the player so now hopefully it should work so let's go ahead and test all right so yeah you can see that our player character is moving but the problem is the player character does not play any animation while moving so let's look at why the player character is not animating so the issue is a character will only play the animation if character dot handle update is called right so this is where we are setting the is moving parameter of the animator and is moving character is what makes the character play the walking animation so if character dot handle update is not called then the player will not perform the animation okay so the problem is the handle update function of the player controller is only called if we are in the free roam state right so the reason for that is because if the handle update of the player controller is called then the player will be able to walk using the player's input right so the player should only be able to walk in the free roam state so that's why we are only calling the handle update from the free roam state okay so while we are in the cutscene state we can't just call the handle update function of the player controller because that will allow the player to move using the user's input but we have to call the handle update of the character of the player right so let's go ahead and do that so here if the state is cutscene then we can go ahead and call player controller dot character dot handle update so this will make sure to play the walking animation when the player character is moving but it won't allow the user to control the player okay so now if we test the player should perform walking animation while moving in a cutscene all right so you can see that while the player moves in the cutscene he is playing the animation so that issue is fixed so next let's go ahead and build a cutscene where the NPC takes the player towards the professor's house okay so first we have to move the NPC to the front of the house and after that we have to make the player move to the front of the house right so let's go ahead and create that cutscene so let me just remove this move actor action we don't need that and then I'll add another move actor action for moving the NPC to the front of the house so here for the character I'll assign the NPC and then I'll add two move patterns so first we have to make the NPC move down 
to the style and then we should make him move left to the style okay so first we'll move the npc down by nine tiles so i'll set the y to minus nine and then we'll move him to the left by five tiles so i'll set the x to minus five and by the way the reason why i know these values is because i've already tried making this cutscene you can try giving different values and test where the character moves to. All right. So next, right after we move the NPC, we should also make the player move towards the front of the house. So it'll be like the player following the NPC to the front of the house. So to move the player, I'll add another move actor action. And this time the actor will be the player. And then I'll add three move patterns. So first I'll make the player move left by one tile so that he reaches the tile in which the NPC is standing. So I'll set the X to minus one. And then I'll make the player move down by nine tiles. So I'll set the Y to minus nine. And then I'll make the player move left by four tiles so i'll set the x to minus four okay so let's go ahead and test this cutscene all right so the npc is moving but we have a problem here we are actually waiting for the npc's movement to be complete before we start to move the player right so that is how our cutscene system works right now. Every action will wait for the previous action to complete before it starts playing. Right. So in most of the case, that's really useful. For example, we only want to show this dialogue once the NPC's movement is complete. Right. But in this specific case, we don't want to wait for this NPC movement to be complete before moving the player. Instead, we want to run these two actions parallelly so that the player will move right behind the NPC and it will look like the player is following the NPC. Okay, so you want to be able to execute these two actions parallelly without waiting. So to implement that, what I'll do is, in our cutscene action, I'll create a boolean variable that will specify if we should wait for this action to complete before starting the next action okay so here i'll create a boolean variable called wait for completion and let me just set it to true by default because for most actions we want to wait before starting the next all right so let me also create a property to expose it Okay, and now from the play function of the cutscene, we should not make all actions wait. We should only make it wait if action dot wait for completion is true. Right? And otherwise, we should not make the action wait. So we can put the action dot play inside the start code routine. All right. So in this case, we won't wait for the action to complete and we'll go to the next action. All right. So now let's go back to Unity. And now for each action, we'll have this wait for completion Boolean. Right. So it's true by default for all actions, but for this move actor action, which moves the NPC, we want to turn it off, right? So now it won't wait for this action to complete before moving the player. So the player and NPC movement should happen at the same time. So let's go ahead and test this.
okay so now those two actions are being executed parallelly but we still have some problems some of our move patterns are not working right so here the player just stayed here he didn't move towards the style and he also did not perform the first move pattern which was to move one tile towards the left so why are some move patterns working and some not working the reason for that is because when we try to move the character by using the move function we are checking for collisions right we are checking if the path between the player's current position and the target position has any obstructions and if there are then that move action won't be performed right so what happened here was when the player tried to move left by one tile the npc was standing on that tile so that move function was not executed okay so while we are moving the character in a cutscene we really don't have to check for collisions we only have to check when we are moving the character using the user's input okay in the case of cutscenes we can let the designers use their diligence and only specify a pattern that won't make the character walk through obstacles okay so to achieve that what i'll do is i'll add a new boolean parameter here called check collisions and i'll set it to true by default so that it is an optional parameter okay and then we should only call this function and check for collisions if check collisions is true okay so now when we call the move function from a cutscene action we can pass false for the check for collisions parameter all right so now hopefully it should not check for any collisions while moving the character in a cutscene so let's test if it's working all right so yeah now we can see that the cutscene is working just as we want we are not checking for any collisions during the movement and the player did follow the npc to the front of the house so we can confirm that those two actions are being executed parallelly so that's awesome now we can run actions both sequentially and parallelly in our cutscene so i'll stop the video here if you think this video is helpful please leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel that will really help me out and you can also support the making of the series by becoming a patreon all right so thanks a lot for watching and i'll see you in the next video